would that have a different cardinality? No, I don't believe so. I think you could construct easily a bijection if you want. Yeah. Um, here's another question you might ask. You could ask, oh, what if I demand the functions to be continuous? Is that your question? True? You were thinking about that. Um, let me just suggest uh, that you continue to think about that uh, it, because it is actually a question you can answer by the time we're done with this course. Okay. We haven't talked about what it means for a function to be continuous, but how many people think the answer to that question is uh, yes? Do you think do you think that if I r make this continuous functions that the cardinality would still be uh, bigger than the real numbers? How many people think yes, bigger? How many people think it's the same as the real numbers? Most of you are not raising your hand. You're like, oh, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Yeah, okay, I would encourage you to think about I'll let you guys think about that. Okay. Um, yes, Willie. So yeah. Well, uh, it suggests that there is a set that has cardinality in between that of the reals and the natural numbers. Yeah. Um, and what a strange set that would be, right? Uh, the thing is that if you could produce such a set, then that would answer the question, wouldn't it? So um, don't expect a construction anytime soon, at least with the current set axioms that we have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very interesting question. Okay, excellent. So um, this, uh, th this idea is going to pop up quite a bit, countability, uncountability, as we're doing other things. But now I want to uh, switch topics and start talking about metric spaces. So um, one of the, the things that's very beautiful about all the stuff we're doing, uh, in addition to, to allowing us to talk about things like real numbers and functions uh, on real numbers, uh, th it's way more general than that. We have tools now that will let us work with lots of uh, collections of things that we're going to develop tools that allow us to work with collections of things that aren't just real numbers. This is why it's important to talk about metric spaces. So what is a metric space? Well, as the name suggests, a space is like, it's like a space, right? There's like, it's more than just a set, right? You could have a set of things. But when you start talking about spaces of things, that kind of implies that there's a notion of what? Space, big, small, there's some way to move throughout the space, yes? Right? Okay. And so this is the idea when we use the word space that it is actually a set that's endowed with something extra. And often it's a metric. Okay. So the idea of a, of a metric is a notion of distance. So here's a question. How to measure distance? Now, if you're talking about the real line, you, well, there's a, a standard way to do that, right? You could talk about the distance between two points. But you could be talking about other things. You could be talking about spaces of uh, that, a space that might be three-dimensional space, right? You could be talking about spaces of phylogenetic sequences, right? You give me a bunch of the, the genetic code of a, of a human and a rat, and a rabbit, and I might want to know which of those genetic codes are closer in some sense, right? With me? Okay. So how are we going to measure, what do we mean by distance, first of all? Okay, so how do you measure distance? You might in, let's say, the uh, R to the N, or in uh, the set of genome sequences just to have you think of a biological example where this comes up. Okay, well, so here we're going to define a notion of distance, and this will be called a metric. So a set X is a metric space if it has a notion of distance. That's basically what we're going to say. If the following is true, there exists a metric 
uh, we'll call it little d, what's a metric? It's a function that takes in pairs of points and spits out what? A number, a real number, in fact, a positive, a non-negative real number. So here we go. Uh, it's a function from x cross x. This is the product. It's, it means it takes in two things, and it spits out a real number. Okay, such that the following is true. Okay, there are three properties that have to be true about about uh, <coughs> this metric. Uh, if you such that for any two points, for all p and q in x, three things hold. The first thing is you want the distance between p and q, d of p, q. That's a real number. You want it to be what? Well, if it's going to be a good notion of distance, let's demand that it's always non-negative. How's that? Is that reasonable? Talk about distance, right? Okay, and one other thing, we want it to only be equal to zero uh, only when, uh, if and only if, shorthand, uh, p is q. That is, y y distance between two things that aren't identical is not zero. Okay, that's the first property. The second property, what do you think is I'd like to be true about this distance of be between p and q and its relationship between the distance between q and p? should be the same. You have a name for that property you might want to call it? Symmetry, yes. We call this the symmetric property. Okay. Uh, the first one naturally is called what? Non-negativity, right, okay. I'm not gonna write that down. Okay, the third thing is something that we've already seen is true for the Euclidean distance, the usual notion of distance. Uh, or for the absolute values, and that is the distance between P and Q better be less than, so here's a picture, P, Q, R. What's the relationship between these three distances? That's di distance PR to the plus distance of RQ. You want this distance to be less than or equal to for all R in X for any intermediate point. And this has a name, un not surprisingly, it's called the triangle inequality. One of the most important properties of a metric. Okay, are you with me? Ah, okay, that seems like, you know, a very natural notion of a distance. Let's see what, uh, let's see some examples of distances here. What are some examples of a distance? Well, the first one, of course, is just the notion of absolute value of the, the difference of two numbers, right? That's definitely a distance. So here's the space R. It's a metric space with what distance? How about the distance between x and y to be the, the absolute value of x minus y? Yes. Yes, yes. In fact, we're going to see some examples here. So uh, if we were to be more, uh, if there's any confusion, we actually specify what the metric is. Yeah. So here, uh, I would write, for instance, uh, I would write, if there's any confusion, I would write uh, the metric is a pair. It's R together with D. Okay, uh, let's see, how about Rn, here's the usual, these are the usual notions, um, Rn with um, this distance, distance between x and y, well it's just going to be the square root of the sum of the squares, x1 minus y1 squared plus xn minus yn squared. Everybody's seen this metric before, yes? Distance? the distance formula it's these are both these and would you agree that this just gives this if you have just one coordinate the square root of a square of a number